Well, we appreciate you uh, again taking time to be on the Fightly Report with us, and I want to introduce you to the viewers. We're welcoming Wisconsin welterweight pro and coach at Pura Vida BJJ, Zach the Barbarian Otto, to the Fightly Report, and he's in Las Vegas right now because Montel Jackson will be fighting Jesse Stratter at UFC Vegas 22 Saturday. That's one of the fighters that trains at Pura Vida BJJ MMA, which is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And last year, Zach. Otto defeated Clarence by armbar at Cage Aggression 29. So yeah, we appreciate uh, you being on the show. Obviously, uh, you know, COVID-19 has hit uh, your promotion, which was um, Pure FC, I'm sure hasn't been around because, you know, Wisconsin, just like Illinois and most of the Midway state, Midwest states are not allowing MMA events. So how has that uh, affected you, you know? during this time? Yeah, it's affected us in a big way. We had ran a show at the end of January of 2020, and then we were going to run our next event in April. And then in March, so a month before our next event, the big shutdown happened. We had to cancel our event in April. As kind of summer was getting closer, we thought, ah, oh, for sure, you know, this thing will pass by then. So we thought, we'll for sure run our show in September that we we're planning on. And then as things kept going along and right. COVID wasn't getting any better, I mean, it just kept going and going and going. I remember there was a time in early summer where I think Minnesota, they had already made the decision that they weren't going to do any shows for the rest of 2020. And we were like, what? It's it's only like May. Wow. How, they're really going all through the rest of the year. Like this, that's crazy. We're for sure going to run shows by the end of the year. And sure enough, 2020 comes and goes nothing. And then 2021 starts and you know, the numbers and stuff are getting worse. And it's like, oh my God, when is this ever going to end? Yeah. A big part of our business has not been able to function. We've been even trying to get something passed where we have all the protocol in place, te uh, temperature checking at the door and social distancing and all that. And the state state of Wisconsin just will not let us operate. It's getting ridiculous. Trying really hard with the state commission to get working and, and hosting events again. And I don't know, there isn't an end in sight. It's pretty frustrating. Our fighters are getting frustrated by it. We're very frustrated by it. We're seeing, you know, Bucks events going on downtown where a couple thousand people can go to those events, but we can't run a simple two to 300 person event with right. social distancing. So it's been, yeah, like I said, really frustrating. And I hope the state commission figures it out soon. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've I've run the same thing in Illinois and even like uh, the events in Indiana. No, Indiana's over open, they, they still have a precautionary to take because they're in a casino and that that's a separate, you know, separate uh, yeah. rules, restrictions as well. So yeah, it just seems like you just reach a dead end no matter what. So I'm hoping that that definitely will change within a few months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're hoping that by summer we can get doing events again. You know, the UFC is about to hold an event here like in another month where they're going to allow some more fans in attendance. So hopefully that gets combat sports operating again. Actually, I mean, this isn't common knowledge yet, but we just got a fight offer for Jamie Simmons at the end of April at that Jacksonville, Florida card. Oh, so yeah. um, hopefully we're able to be a part of that. Hopefully the fight goes through, you know, hopefully we get a chance to kind of see how that works with fans being in attendance again and everything at an MMA event. And hopefully we can do the same this summer. Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, Montel Jackson is back, of course, this weekend, you know, after a tough loss to Brett Johns, you know, how do you feel he approaches this fight? Uh, he's super hungry, Uh, wants to get that win back. The way in which he lost was pretty frustrating as well. You know, he's just getting basically held against the fence. So, of course, we worked on that since his last fight so that that doesn't happen again. But it's just a frustrating way to lose. You know, you're in a fight with somebody you want to, if you're going to lose a fight, he didn't have a mark on his face or nothing. You know, he did all the damage in the fight, but just lost on control time, you know. So uh, he's really hungry to get in there and, and cause some more damage, I think, to people and, and get a win here. Definitely. I know. What do you think of the opponent that he's fighting? You know, uh, yeah, the opponent is a great opponent for doing that. Um, his opponent likes to strike. And I think a lot of the times that Montel's had any bit of trouble in the UFC so far, it's it's been really high level grapplers that just kind of find a way to get some control time and eke out rounds. So I think this guy who's a striker, a really good boxer, I think it's going to be a super exciting fight to watch. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity for Montel to showcase his stand up skills and and his grappling, of course. Definitely. I mean, do you feel like Montel's a sleeper in the 135 pound division? You know, we've seen Alderman Sterling defeat Peter Yan under those circumstances it's probably that there's a rematch you have Corey Sanhagen against TJ Dillashaw who are fighting for possibly number one contendership the fight's not announced yet but 
it's been rumored to happen. So where would Montel fit in? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so far, you know, with his with his uh, career in the UFC, you know, maybe not like a ton of hype behind him just yet with people that he's been fighting and stuff like that. But I think a, a couple more wins and he's going to be right up there in the top 10 and everybody's going to be talking about him. I can tell you already uh, the UFC fighters on the roster at Bantamweight know who he is. Mm-hmm. It's just common fans that maybe don't quite know who Montel is. But I can promise you, no one is getting that call and saying, oh, yeah, I'll take that fight. He's a very hard person to match him for. Everyone just outside of the top 15 in the UFC know who he is, and they don't want to fight him. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that's no surprise. You know, obviously, we've seen Montel, you know, rack up the wins and, you know, and obviously he, put damage on them. He tied the takedown record in one fight in the bantamweight division. And then in another fight, you know, he's completely picking apart a great striker. You know what I mean? So he's catching guys in head and arm chokes. And, you know, he's very well-rounded. He's extremely dangerous. And he's a hard opponent to prep for. He's, he's so fast. He's got that crazy hand size with grip strength. And he can wrestle and strike. And he's a big problem for people in the bantamweight division. Definitely. And, you know, we also have another UFC bantamweight, your gym, O'Day Osborne, who got his first UFC victory last month by knockout as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually he made the decision to drop down the flyweight actually okay and yeah he he wants to uh we're gonna make that move down to 125 now but it just so happened that his opponent fell through and then the person that they're able to find as a replacement is a 125er but it was such short notice he didn't have that much time to get ready for the fight so they were willing to just take the fight up at bantamweight but really oday's trying to make that move down to 25 and he did fight another guy that normally fights at 125 so you know hopefully this this next fight the opponent and him have enough time to actually make the appropriate weight class and we're going to see O'Day down at flyweight. I think that's going to be awesome for him. You know, I think um, he's going to move up the ladder really quick and get some really big opportunities here quickly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the flyweight division is is now, you know, blossomed into one of the more exciting divisions in UFC, as we've seen with Davidson Figueredo and his past title, past couple of title fights as well. Yeah, I think he's an entertaining champ. And I think a fight between him, him and O'Day one day with fireworks. So hopefully that happens. Yeah, definitely. You know, talk about, you know, your release from the UFC see you know many were surprised that you uh got released you didn't really have like you know a lot of losses that were in a row what were your thoughts on that and uh immediately what was the positives well i had just fought out my contract so mm-hmm. after my first four fights i fought out my contract and mm-hmm. i was just kind of waiting around to see what what was going to happen and i was healthy and ready to go so when an opportunity came up again for another fight i jumped in and i took it and i got another four fight contract well what mm-hmm. happened after my next four fight contract was i lost so they weren't looking to re-sign me right away but i also wasn't healthy i needed pretty invasive knee surgery and mm-hmm. i had an eye injury for mm-hmm. my last fight in the UFC. So I had a number of injuries that was going to take a long time for me to heal from and uh, time passed and time passed and they just didn't give me another contract. I could have just waited around and stayed ready and tried to jump on another fight. It was always very difficult for me to make that 170 weight class. On the regional level, I actually fought at 185 or catch weights most of my time. I only fought at 170 like a couple times before I got a contract with the UFC at 170. Sure. And so, uh, you know, I need some time to make that weight at my I'm getting a little older and I just um I want to use this as an opportunity to switch weight classes so I, I could have kept my weight way down and waited around when I once I was healthy and tried to get another contract at 170 but I didn't want to do that once I was healthy I switched my strength and conditioning up a little bit and my diet up I decided I was going to go 185 so now I want to go at middleweight coming off of a loss at welterweight they weren't just going to give me another contract up a weight class so I kind of need to win a couple fights here to show that I deserve a contract at 185 so that's what I'm doing I beat my last guy I was scheduled to fight again next weekend so hopefully there's an opponent there I don't know who it's going to be I know that Cage Aggression having another event in May and we're hoping by June we can start running our own shows again so I hope to get you know another win or two by the time summer rolls around that'll put me on a three-fight win streak and I think you know I can get re-signed at 185. And you'll be looking to fight at your your shows if, if possible. If need be you know just finding opponents isn't the easiest for me right now on the regional level and there's there's only so many events right now you know if, if we got to keep going to Iowa I can sell a lot more tickets in Milwaukee than Iowa so 
it makes more sense to try to fight out of Milwaukee on the regional level, whatever I can do to, to get some fights here. Definitely. Yeah. Well, hope, hopefully you, uh, you'll, you'll have that opportunity. I, you know, I was looking forward to seeing you at the next cage aggression. Hopefully I'll be able to make it out there for the next one. Yeah. We got a, a number of other fighters on the card too. So I think we've got a, a pretty good group that's going down to Iowa next weekend. And I think we're going to have a really good weekend. A lot of prospects that are fighting from amateur to pro with, we got a good handful of guys on the card that are studs. And then what made the past year challenging for you as the gym owner of Pura Vida? Once March hit, we did have to close the gym down for a couple months. So just, of course, people wanting to pause their memberships and stuff, especially the kids program just got completely wiped out at our gym. Even at, once we got the gym open and, and started training again. It just wasn't the same with all the restrictions and things and, and we get it. So it was difficult for a period of time for sure. For, as of very recently, we're, we're killing it. We've had our best months in Puerto Vita history. Oh, as far as monthly memberships and everything like that, our kids program is swung back up and a lot of people returned and we've gained new members. We had moved our gym location to a bigger facility okay. and we had opened in January of 20 and then right away in, in March, we had to shut down. So we didn't really get a chance to market to the new area that we we're in and, you know, showcase the new brand new facility and stuff that we had. We had to shut it down right away. And then COVID just kept going, kept going, kept going. So now we finally get a chance to do that a little bit you know I, I think once summer rolls around and stuff like that hopefully everything keeps progressing uh with the numbers with covid and people are feeling more comfortable to get out and work out again in group setting i think it's we're gonna i mean it's gonna be awesome definitely i mean i, I haven't been to the new gym yet so i'd want to i wanted to come by too but of course I know you've been at the old gym but yeah you got to check out the new place now yeah. it's a little bit further away from chicago so maybe you got like another 10 or 15 minutes in the car to come oh, see us, uh, but it, it's, it's a great facility. You definitely got to come check it out. Yeah. I mean, that's what you kind of envisioned, right? You wanted a bigger place. And yeah. And we wanted to own our own place. So we were renting before. Yeah. And as you get more and more square footage and we're growing the gym and taking over more units in that building, the rent was getting higher and higher and higher. And we were like, man, we're just, you know, throwing money out the window every month to yeah. our land. We should own the building that we put the gym in. So we ended up buying the building that we have the gym in and now when the gym pays rent you know it's it's paying off a mortgage right so it's good and, then, and we can do what we want with it you know what i mean yeah. we're not restricted we don't need to go ask a landlord about this or that we just hey let's knock this wall down and do this and you know mm -hmm. what i mean we, we, we can do whatever we want so it, it's great that's cool and uh you know we haven't seen the leah letson you know fight in a while uh any update on her fight again um i know she had an injury in 2018 that you know actually took some time for her to heal from yeah so leah had some health issues that she's been working out you know hopefully we'll see her back in the UFC again she wanted to switch up her training and stuff a little bit so actually she's kind of really focused on her health and she's been training with another gym okay. recently we'll, we'll see what happens with that going forward definitely and what's your thoughts on uh Stipe versus uh Ngannou rematch how do you feel it's going to play out I, I mean and God who's gotten a, a heck of a lot better, I think, since the last time. It's hard to pick. I learned my lesson a long time ago. You know, I, I bet small little bets, some yeah. to five bucks and stuff on fights. I, I never bet on heavyweight fights, especially high level heavyweight fights, because things can just turn in a moment's notice. So I, I'm going to go with Stipe again, just because the cages have been smaller mm -hmm. now with COVID. The UFC events haven't been in the big cages. They've been in the smaller ones. Yeah. So maybe that can benefit him if he wants to wrestle a little bit more. So I'll go with Stipe just because of that. Yeah. I mean, Engano has been impressive up to this point, though. At the mid. Very much. I mean, yeah. can't get hit by one of those. It only takes one sometimes. He's been super impressive. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you look out there, anybody in particular that you'd be interested in fighting, that you'd be up for the challenge? Anybody in the 185-pound weight division. You know, for so okay. long, I was keeping an eye on all the 70 pounders it's kind of been fun just tuning in to ufc events and watching the middleweight division for a change you know focus on those guys and stuff and man for the first one beggars can't be choosers so just give me anyone so i can get that contract again. yeah that makes sense and would you be open to like doing like the contender series is that would that be a, something you'd be open to yeah i'd be open to that for sure oh. and normally that's over the summertime so maybe it might take that you know 
able to get back in. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously when you get, you know, Dana White to view you again with fresh, you know, fresh eyes. That'd be right. Nice. And it's easier to get an opponent. You know, they, they pay a yeah. lot more than the regional show and people see that as the opportunity to fight in, Dana, in front of Dana White to get that contract. So I could actually get some people to say yes to, to fight me. So that would be good. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the route to take. I mean, I, I had in the back of my head, like you ask you about like a PFL or Bellator, but it seems like you definitely have a track back to UFC. If I, if I was stuck in at, at 170, that was my total weight class. Yeah. And that's where I thought I was going to be the best fighter. I did kind of been there, done that with the UFC at eight fights with the UFC at 170. Maybe I would think about Bellator or PFL or something like that, but I really think 185 is is where I should be, where I should have been all along as a fighter. So I really want to test that out at the U- in the UFC first before I'd make those decisions to go to another organization. And for sure. And when Montel fights Saturday, there still will be no crowd. Obviously, we're not going to have a crowd until UFC 260. Uh, that's coming out at the end of April. So, you know, talk about that. You feel like he's able to hear you a lot better? Yeah, I love it as a coaching standpoint, just because the fighter seems a little bit more relaxed and not just Montel, but everyone that I've coached and also getting clear coaching and stuff across and everything like that is way easier. Of course, the energy is not the same whatsoever. Yeah. You know, you're fighting in the UFC, what you want to walk out and see the crowd and all that and the music and, and stuff like that, the whole production. But as far as going in there and doing your job and trying to be effective coach, it's been it's been very manageable. And Montel does have experience with that. Well, he has fought during COVID, but also he fought on Contender Series. Yeah. Even before they, I think with Contender Series lately, they, I can't remember. I don't want to misquote myself, but I thought for a little while they were kind of allowing once they moved to the apex. I remember with like O'Day's fight, it seemed like you could have more people in the audience than when it was at the old Ultimate Fighter, mm-hmm. which is where Montel fought his contender series. Was at the old Ultimate Fighter gym. So Definitely. you were on Fight Island too, right? Yeah, yeah, we did go to Fight Island. That's unique because of the time, mm-hmm. the time zones. In order for the event to be shown in the United States at the time that people want to watch events on a Saturday night, you're actually fighting at like three in the morning. Right. So the entire week, we never got on Abu Dhabi time. We mm-hmm. stayed on Milwaukee time. We would sleep during the day and we'd be awake all night. Sure. So it was kind of weird. A lot of boredom. You know, we couldn't leave or do anything. And then nothing is to do at three in the morning, yeah. except for the training and, and stuff like that. So it was kind of weird. We were, uh, we were like bats for the week. Mm-hmm. That's, that's fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. But I mean, obviously, you know, that you, the, the opportunities to fight, that's, that's what it costs, right? Yeah, yeah. The plane ride was definitely the best plane ride I've ever been on. It was yeah. entire sections to ourselves, very open and spread out. And they gave first class service to everyone on board. Yeah, it was it was great. Nice, nice. Maybe you'll have a chance to go back there again. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Okay. I know Sol doesn't like the plane ride so much. And that's, I, you know, I fought in a lot of places, fought in China, Brazil, New Zealand. Right. There's been some long flights. I took a direct flight when I fought in China. I took a direct flight from Chicago to Shanghai. Oh, wow. So that- a long flight and then but we beat it with uh vegas to abu dhabi it was a direct flight okay so they we flew to vegas commercial and then everybody met in vegas we got tested mm-hmm. and once we all passed our tests we boarded that private chartered flight from vegas to abu dhabi and i don't i don't know if there's many flights longer than that that exist in the world it's it's basically complete yeah. opposite of the of the world so uh we went up over the North Pole and all that, and I can't remember how many hours it was, like 18 hours or something like that. Wow. So, and Solo is not the best at, at flying, so. Who, who is it? Oh, you're. Solo. Oh, okay. um, so, as, as soon as the fights come in, he's sometimes like, wait, where is it? And we're like, uh, this one's in Abu Dhabi. And he's like, shit. <laughs> like, hate the point, you know? Yeah, no, it's totally understandable. Yeah, but that, that's what you got to do to be a fighter, right? It, it, or, it does get a little creepy when you're flying over the North Pole and you're like, all right, if something goes wrong, we can't just like stop at the next airport here, you know, yeah. for the next eight hours. Like, I hope we don't have any emergencies, otherwise, we're totally screwed. That's true. That's true. But I mean, Dana White go, go takes the flight, so you know. right, right. yeah, <laughs> it might as well be Air Force One, right? <laughs> 
True. Uh, Zach, I um, wanted to know uh, what can we expect Saturday from Montel Jackson? Really, really high level striking. He'll be able to showcase in this fight. Yeah, you, I think you're going to see his speed come through and his counter ability. Maybe a little wrestling if we if we need to take it there too to just mix things up and keep this guy on his toes. But I think you're you're going to see a really well rounded attack, um, and you're going to see that you know Montel definitely belongs in the top 15 and we're going to see the start of a, a title run here i think well i appreciate you zach being on the fight report everybody check it out pure vita bjj mma if you're in the milwaukee area you know check out their website check out pure fc i don't know if you have anywhere we can watch your past events but i recommend everybody to check that out as well and we appreciate you zach we hope you get the fight at cage aggression 30 so let us know i appreciate it man are you you said that you are going to be there no i probably the next the next one I was looking to be there. Oh, yeah, I got you. yeah, yeah. I'm in the process of moving right now, so I, I was, I was, I was gonna move, I was gonna go, but then you know. Yeah, but, I hear you. yeah. Good luck with that. I appreciate it, man. And anytime on the show, anytime, man. Anytime. Thanks, Sean. Take care, Zach. Best of luck mm -hmm. on Saturday night. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you.